Good evening, everybody. Good to see you. We'll wait a couple of minutes. See if a few more roll in. I think they should. <laughs> Hopefully, because right now we don't have a quorum. I just turned on my speaker if anyone said anything. I don't think they did. Damon, um, what was quorum again? I I should remember. So I believe we have eleven members now. Um, so I guess it's a, a simple majority. So we're probably there. I think we have if there are six of us. No, seven of us. I thought I thought with our new members we're almost pretty full. I thought we had all fourteen. Is it fourteen? Elizabeth. It's 13. We have 13. So we think they need a staff liaison. <clears throat> Do you, are you counted in the 13, Max? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we do have seven. Uh, so I think we probably have the quorum. Actually, we have 13 plus Max. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, uh, I mean, with seven, I think we, we still have quorum. Um, okay. Let's, let's wait a minute or two longer and then, okay, there's, there's Vivian. Okay. We'll let her get in and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Hi, Amanda. How's it going? Hi. Doing well, thanks. How is everyone? Doing well. Good. Feeling almost summery out there, other than the little, yeah. the, the passing snow shower from this morning. Yes. It's nice <laughs> to see the sun again. <laughs> sure. Okay, well, um, I bet Vivian will connect here soon. How about uh, how about we go ahead and get started? Uh, Elizabeth, is there anything you'd like to uh, share about the minutes? Uh, no, just hope everybody had a chance to look over those. Um, excuse me, sorry for that noise. Um, were there any um, corrections or um, changes that anybody noted that need to be made to the minutes? I saw none. All right, no memory. Okay, well how about Okay, we so if there are no corrections or changes that need to be made to the minutes, then I guess Damon, you should call for a motion. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Michael? Michael? No. Second? Stella. Great, thank you. 
All in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 All right, that's good. Unanimous, thank you. Oh, any, I think that was everybody, but abstentions, nays, okay, thank you. All right, let's proceed on to our secretary's report. Okay, hi everybody. I hope everyone's doing well. So uh, I mentioned to Damon that we probably need to acknowledge that we have five commissioners whose terms expire on June 30th of the year. Now, two of those are brand new commissioners, Allison, who is filling the spot left by, um, help me out, I just drew a big blank. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, we know who we're talking about. <laughs> Our, our former K-12, whose name I just completely blanked on. And the other is um, Sylvia. Neely. Yes, oh. Neely, thank you, Neely. <laughs> How can we forget Neely? And then Sylvia, who is um, filling the, uh, the spot that was, I think, vacated by um, Joan Clark, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, then we have uh, three commissioners who will have completed um, the bulk, if not the entirety of a three-year term, and maybe in one case, a two-year term, three-year term. And so those would be Amanda and Michael and Dave. Um, so I thought it would be helpful just to go over the process for filling those uh, seats and or for those of you that intend to, um, to renew your appointments or you know, intend to um, uh, take on, you know, extend, your, extend your term or um, be reappointed for another term, and we hope all of you will, um, if you're eligible to do so, and that means you haven't already served three consecutive terms, that's what's stated in our bylaw as the maximum amount of time any one commissioner can stay on the commission uh, at a time. Um, so I just thought we should go over the process quickly. Um, I have been able to determine that everyone who would like to renew their term will need to reapply. And you'll do that by going on to the city website and filling out the online application. The next deadline for that application is June 10th. So we had a, a deadline that passed in March for appointments at the end of March and the next appointment will be on June 21st. That's when council will fill the board, open boards and commission seats. So those of you that intend to, re to, um, uh, to serve another term or to uh, renew, if you haven't even served a complete term, do need to fill out the application, even if you just did, and be sure you get that submitted by the June 10th deadline. It would be nice, I think, Damon, you can, um, you can advise or you can certainly weigh on, in on this. At some point, it would be good to have a sense of which of these commissioners do plan to apply for a subsequent term and which commissioners will be leaving us so that we have a sense of what the open seats might be so that as a group, we can begin to think about getting the word out uh, amongst ourselves, you know, using our networks as well, of course, as um, making sure the city knows what position that what seats will actually be open so that they can post and advertise those seats uh, as they typically do in advance. So my intention tonight was not to ask people to um, signal their intent, but to ask anybody whose term is expiring at the end of June to uh, let us to know to know that, uh, to know kind of where we stand, and to um, let us know. And Damon, you may want to you may want to set a timetable for that uh, about intention to reapply. Sure. Yes. Um, first of all, I just uh, want to thank everybody who has served, especially those who have served for an extended period. I think one thing that uh, 
our commission truly values right now is the institutional knowledge. It's something that we're short on and that the majority of us have been on the commission for a, a pretty brief period. Um, but we understand that, you know, life happens and not everyone can renew all the time. But if, yeah, if you all, if, if those who are up for a renewal in June could let me know, um, preferably by the next meeting, uh, that would be helpful. That way we can make preparations if need be and, and, and promote appropriately and, and personally reach out to people. Uh, I think that would probably give us an adequate amount of time. Now, in regards to the process, and Elizabeth, you may know, or, or Max, feel free to chime in. If our members are wanting to renew, I know they have to apply, but is there a uh, advertisement process regardless of whether or not they're reapplying? That's correct, yes. That's correct, okay. Mm -hmm. So anybody can apply. Okay. Already, yeah. The positions for the terms that will be expiring in the near future are already being advertised. Oh, okay. they are already being advertised. I did not notice that when I was looking that up the other day. Okay. Okay, so that's out there. So uh, either way, um, it would be helpful to know uh, your intentions by the end of next month. Uh, I think that would still give us a decent amount of time, although less than a month, I think time's really going by quickly. Um, so yeah, if you could let me know, that would be very helpful. Thank you. And I hope that we'll all be seeing us <laughs> after June. But it didn't because it's been a pleasure. You know, I feel like some of us are just hitting our stride. But absolutely, now you know kind of what the timetable is for that, and, um, and we'll put that on the agenda probably for next month as a discussion if it needs to, if there needs to be one. Yeah. Yes, Adrian. All right. Is yeah. a question for me, Adrian? Uh, it's for the group. Um, I wanted to propose, you probably know this for some time now, um, some kind of a new members orientation. And it seems like this upcoming um, potential induction or, or you know, new members to the commission, again, another, another group, would be a great time to institute something. And what I had in mind was uh, one of those in-between meetings like we've done for certain committee work. Uh, just a one time, it doesn't, I mean, one time each time we have a new influx of commissioners. In the case of the four that have come now, I would be willing to do to uh, hold it or, you know, be a part of it uh, even earlier. I was thinking between our May and June meeting, not too soon. And the, the reason for that is, um, I'd like to spend a little bit of time trying to put together some sort of a handbook, some kind of uh, materials that that uh, we can keep on the Google Drive and people can refer to for the bylaws, the, what the committees do, uh, you know, all our general policies and procedures such as we have them. So uh, I know Elizabeth was gonna do some something toward that last time and maybe she and I can talk. We, we were going to talk, I know. Um, but I, I want to propose that it, we don't have to decide on it now, but maybe discuss it next uh, in at our May meeting for an actual vote on whether we go ahead and hold something between May and June, an hour long, and and uh, the new the new members would be asked to come, the four new people, and whoever else would be interested, especially if you want to explain a bit about what your committee does or some part of our operations. But anyway, I just thought if we had, short of forming a new members committee, if we had at least a little protocol in place where anytime we get a new batch of people, we hold this small one hour orientation, we have something to give to them, to look, to refer to. And um, and maybe at that time we put people on committees too. I mean, it could, it could, uh, take care of a number of things in a short session. Um, Adrian, I'm glad, I'm glad for you to bring the topic back up because we certainly discussed it plenty. Uh, I did as an action item from the March meeting, I did send a batch 
of documents to all four of the new commissioners, um, links uh, to the bylaws, to our current, um, uh, to our current, um, wow, I can't find my words today for some reason. <laughs> Um, we have an idea what yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about, the, good the essential documents. Um, okay. And so uh, I've heard from everybody that they've received those and hopefully uh, had some time to look over some of them. Uh, and then my intention was to follow up with that in another week or two with specific committee related documents that might be of value and importance. Um, and those will be individualized depending on the committees that each of the new commissioners have stepped onto. So in some cases, we don't have a lot of written documentation. We don't have a lot of archived material on the shared drive from the committees, but I'll send, I'll send uh, what we do have that would be useful. But okay. I, I still like the idea of creating kind, some kind of a structured kind of um, orientation meeting or session and I'd be happy still very happy to partner with you on thinking through that and putting together uh, you know what what that might contain if you want to reach out to me I'm happy to if you make a note to reach out to me <laughs> I'll be happy to partner with you on that I'll do that and from the documents that you've gathered and shared we can um, start a, some kind of a handbook or some some yeah. beginning of that and then maybe the um, one hour session between May and June is um, a little bit more Q&A than it is. Uh, for this fledged. group, that might be the case, but yeah. for any incoming commissioners, it'd be nice to have something that just becomes part of the process. And, and, and one last thing on that topic, um, I did think about um, some sort of promotion of our new commissioners in the same way that four of us, I think, uh, Stella and I, and I I think Michael was in my, oh no, Michael can't be in my group because he's finishing now. But anyway, um, we, were, we were put on Facebook, our photographs, a little brief write-up. Um, so I thought that this maybe could fall under the outreach committee's umbrella that anytime we have new commissioners, um, something, a little, a little something, a little blurb is made of they've joined, they, you know, they're on the commission. They, um, if we knew what committees they were on already, we could add that in too. But anyway, just some, you know, it, it, if you're going to do this service, it makes sense too that it be announced and and uh, celebrated in some some. Is there a Facebook page? We do have a Facebook page. That's where this. Uh, that's where this went when I first came on the commission. Because I think I had brought up and um, Stella was working on the next door component. Uh, it's just a lot of, uh, uh, I know a lot of people locally go more to next door these days for local stuff than Facebook. Um, there's been somewhat of a move away from Facebook, but it'd be great to put it on next door as well. Well, it could be something too that, that I tend to think we have this core uh, content information and it really ought to be going out to multiple places like Instagram and our face, our website and our Facebook page and the city news alerts. We're, you know, an announcing grant winners and things like that. So, so uh, it, it could really go anywhere. Hey folks, I hate to um, push things ahead, but we yeah. have quite a bit to cover and we have some guest speakers. So if you don't mind, um, let's let's move on to our next topic. And that's actually, I, I wanna bring up, um, we have not had a committee meeting in some time. So we generally have quarterly committee meetings where we get together over, I guess, a three hour period and have uh, 45 minute meetings one after the other on different, uh, on different committees. And uh, that's something we really have to schedule before long, I know it's, might come up at a similar time as, as the meeting you just uh, suggested, but it's something we should probably do pretty soon. I don't think it's probably worth our time to for everyone to look at their calendar right now, but uh, I'll probably email you all at some point before long 
and start to try and figure out a time when we can we can have our committee meetings. Sound good? Okay. Um, do we have any email communications update or report, Adrian? Uh, just a couple of things. The usual announcements come out from Fred Blanton, and I just wanted to check that uh, Elizabeth, I think you were going to get the email addresses of the new members to him, so that yes, they... I've done that. Okay. So, uh, Kimber and Vivian, have you gotten emails from Fred Blanton that you're aware of? Yes, just today, actually. Yeah, he's he's sending out a number of announcements lately. Um, then we, uh, on occasion, we get an invitation from to become sister cities with another. Uh, nation or excuse me another city or sometimes they're not quite cities anyway so we don't really have a policy about that yet but nothing big nothing so specific has come through that i need to uh that we need to act on it um that's it there, there was one tomorrow that unfortunately i just saw the alert about uh, I think it's 2 p.m. tomorrow. There's a meeting for small cities, um, which I think we would count as. Um, but yeah, it's right in the middle of the work day. So. Yeah, if anyone ever sees those invitations and they're interested in attending, by all means, please do so. It doesn't matter what committee you're on or what your role is, feel free. Okay, um, let's move on to our city representative updates. Uh, let's start with Winneba. I see Nana is not here. Dave, is there something you would like to add? Um, we are deep into the planning process for our next sister city delegation to Winneba. It's leaving on May 4th, so about less than three weeks away. We've got 26 people from Charlottesville that are heading over to Ghana. Very excited about that. And um, be there for about nine, 10 days. And um, uh, the fire truck, um, you know, the, the city of Charleston donated a fire a fire department, donated a fire truck. Um, we, you know, hit all kinds of bureaucratic delays in actually getting it onto the ocean, but it looks like uh, we're very close to actually getting it onto the ocean now after the latest delay. But um, we're very excited about that. And more importantly, our, our uh, the Futu Fire Service, the Winneba Fire Service is very excited about receiving that fire truck. Um, but yeah, so it's been a busy time. Um, I know this 26 people are excited to, to uh, experience Ghana and they'll be there for one of those main annual festivals. So it's quite a lively time to be in countries. So happy to answer any questions people might have. I can't wait for a report back. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing trip. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dave, I was wondering if you can, with all the things you probably have on your mind, when you're leaving at some point, send us a few photos sure. of, of the group, the departure, because that would also be a nice way to fold in uh, that that a, a few of the travelers are being supported by the Sister City Travel Scholarships Program, something general like that. That'd be great. I'd be happy to do that. Where is the fire truck now? Is it still in Charlotte? <laughs> no, no, it's in Baltimore. It's at the port of Baltimore. Um, that's where it's supposed to be loaded onto a ship and shipped over to Ghana. Uh, it was supposed to um, actually get on the ship, I think, two weeks ago now, three weeks ago, and there was another bureaucratic obstacle, um, which we're very close to resolving. So it's just lots of little, little and not so little um, challenges to overcome, but it's almost on, on the seas, knock on wood. We appreciate you moving things forward. Play well, to upload pictures onto the web during the trip that we could publish to say, hey, this is going on now, rather than doing it all at the end and kind of this is a group photo at the end, kind of get people involved in the process day one, day two. I don't know. I could post things on next door or Stella could if she had that, I don't, if she's doing that, or it'd be kind of be interesting maybe to get people involved. Mm -hmm. as it's happening yeah that's yeah. a great idea um we usually have um ongoing sort of regular posts throughout the trip so um 
we'll make sure to do that as well this time. So, and those tend to be on Facebook just because that's I'm personally on Facebook. I'm not on Nextdoor, but if anybody wants to repost any of them to Nextdoor or any other social media platform, by all means. Is this the only trip sponsored for Winneba this year? So we could do like a tag, like, you know, Winneba 22 or Seville Winneba 22 or something like that? Yeah, we did one in January, but this is the the last one for the year. We'll, we're likely to do one at the end of the year around their New Year's Day festival. So that's more, you know, 2023, but, um, but yeah. Because if, if we have a standard, if we just have, it doesn't really matter what it is, but if we have a standard one, then anybody that has a Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, can just include that in their personal things and um, it'll get tagged. Sounds good. Great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how about we go to Based on Song, Elizabeth? Okay. Um, just real quick. So our former vice mayor, Kristen Sekas, is traveling to Besançon in just a couple of weeks. She will be there for about three nights, and uh, we have reached out to the government officials there, to our contacts, to, um, to see if they can uh, arrange for her to either have a meeting with the, the mayor, whose name is uh, uh, Anne Vigneault, or with one of the mayor's deputies, if Madame la mayor is not available. And uh, we have asked um, Mayor Snook to write sort of an official letter of greeting or salutation mayor to mayor, since these are new two new mayors. Um, so hopefully she'll be able to, um, she'll be able to deliver those greetings in person um, and meet, she's gonna, you know, be able to meet with the, the folks that have been installed under the new mayor's, in the new mayor's cabinet and the new mayor's administration, folks who have been installed to be our primary contact people um, for sister city relations going forward, which is wonderful. I'm delighted that she, uh, you know, she reached out to us, as you know, and I'm delighted that she's willing to do that. And I think she'll, you know, be a perfect, perfect, perfect representative and proxy um, sort of for both the Sister City Commission, but also, you know, obviously for the city of Charlottesville. She's been there before and she's met folks along the way. So hopefully um, that will go smoothly and I'll be able to report uh, on the backside when she returns at our May meeting. Nice. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right, Stella. Uh, how about you? Our, our guest speakers are not here yet. How about you go ahead and give your report? Uh, okay, well, we start uh, by saying that the Wes and Kelly came back. They went to Poggio. I met them one day and they told me great things about it. Um, so, I mean, of course, they're going to, to give the, the report soon, but it looks like if it, it was uh, successful. Uh, and then there is an update about uh, the uh, musicians that should come here from Poggio. Uh, do you remember that I said that in Poggio they are planning to do a musical contest for, for young artists or young bands? And the winner, they would like to send them here to play uh, one concert in Charlottesville. Um, now, the thing is that at the beginning they told me that they didn't need any, any financial support. They would pay for everything. But they asked me actually if it's possible to cover some of the expenses. So this is the situation that they have now. Um, the contest is going to be in July. Uh, we don't know yet, of course, who is going to win. So it can be one person up to four people because they are not paying for more than that. They are going to pay the uh, trip, so the tickets and everything. They asked us if we could pay for uh, uh, like a stay of three nights for them um, and eventually to cover some of the meals and uh, the transportation from the airport. I don't have any problem in getting them at the airport. So I don't, I mean, unless we want to get a car for some reason, I can uh, organize to go and get them at the airport. I don't have any problem with that. The problem is that, uh, again, uh, from what I understood, they are waiting for us to tell them something because they don't want to start this thing if they don't want. They didn't say exactly that, 
but they were waiting for us to actually approve it and start doing the advertisements for, uh, for the bands and everything, starting organizing it. Um, so the, again, I mean, we will not know the exact budget until July because we don't know how many people they are. It could be one or it can be two, okay, or four. I was looking around, I can do a quick share screen, but um, I was looking at just a day. Uh, so the contest is in July and Giacomo told me that they would come here like or September or October. So we can tell them when we prefer, but looking around, I just tried different dates for like three days in Charlottesville for two, for four people, the maximum that we can do. And uh, I saw that there are uh, like places that are like 300 or 400 total. Um, so, I mean, it depends what we want to do. Uh, we can also, I would like, if you agree, I would like to, to do like this, uh, since, I mean, they are waiting for something from us. I would like to give them some tentative yes, so like we can cover some of the expensive, but we will need to officially approve it in July so that they can actually do that. And maybe after that, based on how many people they are, we can decide exactly how and what we could cover. So if we can say, no, we are not covering the meals, for example, or whatever. Um, yeah, and maybe. yeah. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, and they told me that they would like actually to have someone from Charlottesville to be part of the jury for this contest. Someone who, I mean, of course, knows about music <laughs> because they told me that the jury will be all people that knows about music. So maybe when Wes and Kelly come, I don't know anyone else, but maybe one of them can do that if we want to. Or, uh, um, I mean, if you have any other idea, if you know any other person who would like to do that, that, I mean, I mean, I think it's nice. And it's also nice. Um, after two years of pandemic, it's a good idea to start having some kind of exchange in person. I mean, you know, maybe we can think of doing something similar next year with young bands in Charlottesville and send them to play in Poggio. I don't know. We can think about it. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a good uh, exchange. The problem is that our time and their time is kind of different. So, yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. Would it be a good idea to look for an Airbnb house for the monk? Um, yeah, I didn't check all of it. I just wanted to have just a general idea how much it could be. Um, also for the meal, for example, I could have them at dinner sometime. I mean, we can organize something together if we want. I mean, they're young people, so they don't need... So Stella, I, yeah. I think this is a great opportunity to find families in Charlottesville that would like to host each of the people who are coming. That is the model that we use whenever we have visitors from Besançon. Okay. And I mean, we have to do it that way because we as a commission simply don't have the money to put people oh, up okay. in hotels and pay for their meals, you know, for delegations of 20 or whatever it is. If they're asking for some, some assistance, there are, there should be plenty of people in Charlottesville who have, um, who would be delighted to be to host, you know, uh, one of these young musicians for the duration. And I think it's just a matter of starting to, I, what I suggest you do is that you start to tap into some of the networks, folks who've been involved with Poggio exchanges in the past. Um, our former commission chair will know of a number of those people, Terry. And I suggest that that might even be a more enriching experience for them than just to stay in a hotel amongst themselves. Yeah. I don't know if they have special needs and they have specifically requested hotel lodging. No, 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 no. They, they actually suggested like even a, a place at the, like, you know, the university, right. like to eat at the university. I mean, so they, yeah. my guess is the lodging and meals and transportation, you know, that those probably for just two or three days, if that's what you're looking at, that that should be, that should be very doable okay. from within the community. It's just a matter of getting people to get, uh, to agree to that. Okay, okay. So that's good news. So at, at least I can tell them that and they can start, um, I mean, they, they can start to organize the contest and everything. 
what you might think about doing is telling them what the thinking is at mm -hmm. running by them. Would that be an enjoyable experience that this is, this is the model sure. that we've used in the past that, the, you know, that um, in order to make sure that people have an interesting experience and that we know that there are community members who would probably step up for help with all of those things. So I don't know if others have anything to add to that or, you know, don't like that idea, but I, I thought, you know, you should know that's absolutely what we have to do when we have people who want to come over from Buzz on Song. That, that, I was going to suggest that, but then I wasn't sure if it was appropriate. I, I have a couple of groups I could put that out to, um, specifically people who might want to also share some of their Italian speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think I'd, I think we need to um, also think globally about it in the sense that, that if, if they are not going to um, hold this contest unless we give the go ahead, then we have to be really, really clear about what we're saying yes mm -hmm. to in terms of, in terms of financing. And the commission, you know, has to be clear on how much we would be willing to put toward this. And there are going to be, exp I love the idea of the homestays and, um, you know, less expensive meals where possible, et cetera. But but at the end of the day, all those things need to be itemized, including the cost of a venue, potentially, and maybe cost of advertising this. You don't want a group to come over and have an event and, you know, there's not a, a, a real dedicated group behind promoting it and, and doing all that. So I just think I'd like to see us, you know, be really clear on are we agree agreeing to put $2,000 toward this project or toward, or, or is it, is it a lot less, is it a lot more, whatever the number is that we're really clear on how much and what it's meant to cover. And then that might dictate that they have two winners versus four winners, or uh, I, I don't know exactly the order that things happen, but in, but I, I, I just would like us to not go into it kind of uh, without clear, you know, boundaries or, or, Quant, uh, financial amounts that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see a venue on Tuesday. That it's the Music Resource Center, and I don't know how it works, but Wes suggested it to me, and I saw that they came. So I think that it, you know because it's a sister city exchange and. Um, you know, that it's, this is the kind of situation where uh, there's no harm in asking people to donate if they can, you know, to donate their time or to donate the space or to, you know, donate, um, you know, in terms of marketing and promotion. Um, because I know in the past that people have, have been happy to do that in order to, you know, support a sister city related kind of exchange. So it, it's great. I mean, I agree with Adrienne that it's important to try to have some kind of a budget, some kind of an understanding of sort of what the needs are and how to get those needs covered. And again, I just encourage you to not, you know, not be afraid to ask, you know, for people to step up and really support this. Um, you know, because that's, that's, it seems to be what makes it, what makes it possible. Would there be a cost? I mean, I know there's a question of weather, but if we were to do it, like say in Booker T. Washington Park, couldn't Parks and Rec approve that? Or even if the pavilion was not being used on a certain day, because there's not always something going on there or. Right, absolutely. I would think that PVCC as well would be willing on an off time to donate mm -hmm. their it, Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I cannot hear you. What were you saying, Damon? I'm changing my mic. Do you hear me now? Yes. So um, do you have enough now that you can go back and share a little bit more information with them and, and get their thoughts? 
or do you need more from us? Um, I don't know. They wanted to approve these, uh, like in these days, to start uh, organizing it and to start putting out the advertisements. So I can tell them that, for example, even if we, I mean, it's possible to to find the families like we like Elizabeth suggested. Um, so I can tell them that we have anyway the um, willing to assist in some ways. Um, and then we can see what happens. I mean, I don't, until we know how many people they are, I just do like this kind of tentative budget, but, that, but it's like, again, the hotel like 300, 400, I don't know. So and the number of people uh, for everyone. Damon, we, yeah. The number, uh, the number of people depends on the size of the band. That's right. not how many award winners, like how many people attend, like first, second, third, fourth. Like it's whether or not it's a one person singer or like a band of four. That's They're going to open it to everyone, but they say the maximum, maximum of four people because they are not going to accept more, so. Okay, thank you, Stella. Uh, would you like to introduce our guests? Yes. Hi, Wes and I, Kelly. So I met them last week and they told me a lot good things about uh, their trip to Poggio, right? Hi, everybody. Um, it's a great, uh, well, we're glad to be here. And um, we're glad to finally have made it to Poggio after over two years. <laughs> so the grant uh, was awarded in early 20, 2019. So no, late, no 2019. late 2019, early 2020. So as you know, everything changed in the world then. Uh, and we intended on going twice. And each time there was like a new COVID wave that kind of made it impossible and then finally just last month we went um so we just wanted to say hello and then kind of let you know where we're at in our project and kind of where it's heading from here um so first off um because of the covid situation live music wasn't really much of an like we had intended on going and maybe performing live while we were there on this trip but um, live music wasn't really so much of an option. So we ended up changing our project a bit and coming up with a like adjacent idea. And um, basically what we, what we decided was to have the sound of Poggio and the sound of Charlottesville is our kind of like the, what we're working with. And um, our plan is to arrange it in like a audio format and so, for example, I mean, it's a little complicated, but you can imagine if you're listening to a piece on headphones and the right ear is the sounds of Poggio and the left ear is the sounds of Charlottesville, and then the sounds will cross back and forth. So sounds from Poggio will cross over to Charlottesville and then cross back to Poggio. And so we thought this would be a really nice way of like presenting the idea of cultural exchange with some sort of like almost audio and musical and sound exchange back and forth. So this is the basic idea. Uh, we went to Poggio and recorded a bunch of audio and- um, Including we, lots of music. Right, including lots of music. And we did the same in Charlottesville. And- um, And the idea too is that we'll um, play this piece at say three o'clock, um, East Coast time, and it will be nine o'clock uh, Poggio time. And so we'll all be listening together at the same time. Right, and the event will be a YouTube live event so that everybody can be in the link at the same time, ask questions in the comments, and then we'll be there to answer questions at the end. Um, so that's the basic idea. And we thought what we could do today is We'll share some photos, a couple of photos of our trip and also um, a couple of sound recordings that we recorded in Poggio to kind of give you an idea of what we're gonna be working with as we put the piece together. 
over the next couple of weeks. Um, Maybe so. we should start with the sound. Sure. Yeah. Um, and we want to be conscious of your time. So, um, do we have? Yeah. How much time do we have to play a little audio? So our our meeting is going to wrap up at about six o'clock. So, okay. and we have a little bit of, of ground to cover, but I would say you have uh, at least maybe 20 minutes. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's more than enough time. Right. We just, just wanted to play a few things. Um, so let me go ahead and share screen and hopefully this works. I can share sound as well. Uh, one moment. Um, so. Okay, so the first clip, do you want to introduce the clip? Sure, you, we want to start yeah. with. Yeah, so um, uh, we're going to play some music from two brothers, um, their name, uh, the Czechy brothers. Uh, they, one of them plays um, keyboard and the other sings, and it's just beautiful. Um, they sang for us in City Hall. And, and so we recorded them. They're both from Pojo and they live in the area right now. So um, here's some a recording of their music. Lei chi è? Non lo so. Quell'occhiata da sotto la frangia non era per me. Se era per me era un morso, un rasoio capace di uccidere senza far male. Lei chi è? Che ne sai? Quello sguardo sapeva di Francia e di nudità. Intraviste a Pigalle annusate. A marzo quell'anno a Montmartre i colori cambiavano ad ogni sospiro del vento. Lei chi è? Lei è quella legione di viaggi che attraversò la regione del mio cuore a passo di danza. Okay, so those are the uh, two brothers performing in town hall, city hall in Pojo. Um, and do you want to introduce the next one? Yeah, um, the next one, um, this is sound, not, not so much um, like a musician, but um, it just kind of represents the musicality of the city. Um, we attended a peace rally for Ukraine which happened in the middle of the city. And um, part of that was the playing of church bells. Um, so as you're listening to these picture in the performance, these will all, since these are from Pojo, these will all be in your right ear. And they'll be, the soundscape will shift from your right ear to your left ear as Charlottesville sounds are presented. So it will kind of go back and forth. And we're still working out the exact composition of the piece. So what, what will follow those church bells on the Charlottesville side. We're working on that with the sounds that we have from Charlottesville, but it will kind of bounce back and forth. And then one of the ideas is to have some of the music begin. So for example, the Czechy brothers music, the first piece you heard might begin in your left ear, come to the center of both ears and then move back to the left in the end so that you know this is from Pojo, but music is kind of what's connecting the two places in the in the center of the audio sound. So 
we're going to encourage everyone listening to the piece on YouTube to make sure they have headphones when possible, because it will really be much more powerful, I think, when heard from headphones, so you can hear both sides. And we'll also have Wes's cello music be a, a way to weave some of the sounds together, yeah. too. So I'll be adding my instrument as a, as a score to connect some of the sounds. Um, and then speaking of cello, uh, this is a recording of, we went to a music school, and so this is a recording of a cello student and his teacher. In Pocho. In Pocho. Uh, my name is Francesco, and his name is Alessio. Um, the, the title of this song is Please Take for, for Me in My Place a Kiss to Florence. And it's a very, very old, um, very old song from written from a, a man of Florence, and it talks about uh, an immigrant who is far from Florence, and he meets uh, a girl from Florence and asks her to to take his kiss to to his hometown. <laughs> piece we'll play is also from the music school, which was, uh, this was recorded just down the hall um, in another classroom, a piano, a piano piece. kind of get an idea of how at least the Poggio side of the piece will sound. And then in Charlottesville, we recorded some local musicians. Um, we also got sounds, uh, different sounds around Charlottesville. And so we're just hoping to kind of give the listeners a real, uh, a, an audio picture of what, do the, what does each place sound like. For the people of Poggio who've never been to Charlottesville, we can kind of share in that way and vice versa. Should we share some photos? Um, sure. We can. So we have a couple photos we can share too. One second. Um, While you're getting that up, what are mm -hmm. what are some of the sounds from Charlottesville you all plan to include? Sure. Uh, oh, do you want to? Yeah. Um, well, I guess just some of the sounds. You can maybe speak to the music, yeah. but um, uh, we have. Um, a man with his baby and he's just sort of like <laughs> in the park in yeah, Belmont in the park, park blowing on her belly and she's giggling <laughs> um, <laughs> um we have the sound of the Ravana river that's that we think will uh -huh. be really nice um yeah. musically we went over to Devin Sproul and Paul Carreri's studio and we have some recordings of them performing songs um we have an artist uh, who's performing songs to um, yeah. Belanle Adeboye. Yeah. We also, um, so when we were in Poggio, um, we were staying just outside of town in the countryside and our host at the um, b, b we were staying at, um, we saw there were chickens in the yard. So we just went out one day to like say hi and have a little just, have a conversation with him. And we started recording these chickens and you know, the chickens of Tuscany. And as he was talking in Italian, we gathered, he was saying, we, our Italian is uh, limited and his English was limited. 
So he was talking about the intelligence of his chickens. So we just thought, okay, this is a funny little piece of audio. But then we went in Charlottesville, just outside of town, to two young girls who um, have their own chickens. And we asked them about the intelligence of chickens and they said the same exact thing basically in English. And then we got the sound of their chickens. So we thought it could be really funny in one part to have the sound of it, Tuscan chickens fading over to the sound of Virginia chickens and both people sort of saying similar things about their chickens. So that's sort of the more playful more playful moment, I think, of the piece, but. And then uh, another thing we have is a tango lesson from a Charlottesville tango dancer. Yeah. Kind of finding little moments in each place, each place. Yeah. Um, so let me share screen really quick here and I can show you some of the images from Pojo. So there I am with Giacomo, the vice mayor um, in the Medici Villa. So we have some audio of him explaining some of the, the space there. And um, he was our guide. He was, he was yeah. an excellent guide. Yeah, the whole time we were there. Yeah. yeah. Um, here we are outside the, the villa with Giacomo. Uh, this is the peace rally. So um, what they had was a really incredible giant peace flag that was on loan from another city. And they had all of the children of Poggio came and carried the flag up the street to the chapel, which is where we got those the sound of those bells that night. Um, this is uh, Ricardo, he was our host. And uh, this was on a day we, he, he was trimming olive trees pretty much the whole time we were there. Yeah. So <laughs> every time we saw him, he was out trimming his trees. Which we also got some audio of the uh -huh. sound of pruning, trees being pruned. Here we are with the Czechy brothers, the musicians you heard at the very beginning. And of course you may recognize this is um, Matze here, the original Charlottesville connection to Poggio. <laughs> this is in City Hall um, recording the Czechy brothers. Here I am at the Charlottesville Poggio sign, <laughs> of course, <laughs> had to get that photo. Um, this is at the music school. Um, we didn't play the sound today, but we have some, a recording of uh, this student playing drums. And his teacher. And his teacher. Yeah. Um, this is from a community garden uh, that has a lot of heritage varieties of fruit trees and um, and just like huge garden and honeybees. And uh, this farmer actually gave us some seeds to bring back to Charlottesville, which I started and handed off to cultivate Charlottesville. Um, and they're putting them in the ground soon. <laughs> yeah. Here we are in the local wine shop. <laughs> just, uh, we got some audio of the sound of wine, just and the, some audio of the owner of the shop talking about the different types of wine from the region. And I think that's all yeah. for now. Um, so one more thing to add, um, as, a, as a part of the performance, um, I've been offered, um, a performance next summer at the Festival de la Colline, which is the Col Colline, Colline, Let's see, Cole, Let's see, my Italian. <laughs> Colline, Colline, thank you. Uh, it, it's uh, so I'll be going there next summer to perform live when that's like a you know, that will be kind of a another uh experience with our friends in Poggio. So, any questions, please please feel free to ask. Yeah. Wes and Kelly, that was just wonderful. I, I, I just think this makes me feel so excited and happy to be um, funding projects and to be working specifically on the grants committee. So your idea about, you know, the fact that playing live had to be scrapped and your idea about having two soundscapes that shift is just, just a, a fantastic little moment of kismet 
you know. Thank you. Because because I really it's such a nice idea and and so my my question is uh, we can discuss it more later too but it's about um, the U do I understand right it's an online event a YouTube webinar or event yeah and um, I can't I I so wish it could be something too out outdoors with big speakers but I know that would be a lot more um, involved you know but even to have those soundscapes shift from one if possible from one set of speakers to another and mm -hmm. but since I'm an Italian teacher and I can't get it out of my blood I'm curious if you would have any visuals on screen at the at the YouTube event would people either be seeing some scenes some of the photos you took while there or especially when the Czechi brothers do their do their piece to see the Italian lyrics and the English translation would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah the, the idea is to have captions. Yeah. Um, so yeah. for people in Poggio to have uh, Italian captions of the English and then for people in Charlottesville to have English captions of, that's part of the plan for sure. Nice. So they'd yeah. be seeing something as they heard these sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our, we're going to do some promotion too around the event to make sure that Enough, you know, a lot of people will know when it is, there'll be time for people to, and we're thinking that at around three or 4 p.m. on a Sunday might be a good time because then it will be 10, 10, 9 or 10 p.m. in Pojo and people will be, have finished dinner and we'll, we'll coordinate with Giacomo too when the best time would be. If there's a particular, so we can get the most number of people listening and you know, asking questions as possible. That's, that's great. And I'll be, I can be in touch with you later too, to stay in touch with the outreach committee who mm -hmm. can take some of those images that you already have okay. and use them as teases, as advertisements right. for the event. Perfect. On our different outlooks. Great. And also after all of my years of music in Virginia, I have a pretty good uh, music, Virginia music list. So I was planning on sending it out to them as well to let them know that, you know, this is happening. Even people who don't live in Charlottesville, if they live in Richmond or Fantastic. anywhere else can come and attend. And, yeah. So. Oh, five stars. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Absolutely. I mean, this is why we, we have grants. So I think it's amazing. I love the chicken story. That's so <laughs> cool. Um, we really appreciate you all. We're glad to have action being taken play, taking place, people doing things in person. Uh, mm -hmm. really gives us a, a lot of momentum, makes us feel excited about what's coming. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it was a total, like, it was just a total delight to be in Poggio. I mean, everyone was so wonderful and especially Giacomo. I mean, he just really, we told him about the idea and he was kind of inspired and he was like, okay, I'm, I, you need to talk to this person and this, and like, he really like, set us up and then he was like and who else do you want to talk to and we were like well it would be really cool to get some cello and he's like all right i know where you need to go it'd be really cool to get some songwriters okay these songwriters so it was really amazing to have him kind of like so helpful <laughs> and in charlottesville it was easier because we know so many people and you know so it's like but in pojo it was really special to have a guide like giacomo and Stella too. Thank you, Stella, for all, for connecting us, and then the whole time just being available for support. And you know. well, we thank you guys. We thank you for um, presenting to us, and I know we're very excited about about the program when it comes. Okay, thank and, you. and we'll keep you posted. But hopefully, we're. I mean, these next couple of weeks will be the arranging of everything. Um, of, of just getting it all into place and the back and forth of it. And then we can plan like an actual date for the event. And of course, we'll keep everybody posted as far, you know, in advance so we can get all the pieces in place for the promotion and stuff. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. We really yeah. appreciate you. Thank you, thank all. you all. Yeah, thanks thank for you. having us. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Cellos and chickens. I love that. <laughs> thank you. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Wow, that was fantastic. Okay. So uh, now on to uh, Weiwei Tenango. We have 
Um, sounds like person visiting. Elizabeth, would you like to chat about that? Uh, well, I don't really have much to, to say. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I learned recently that um, Kelly Epley, who's on the Ishtatan Foundation Board and has traveled to Guatemala many, many times, um, is planning to go over. Uh, and at this point, um, I understand from him that he'll be traveling in August. And he has already agreed um, that if we as a commission want to um, have him set up for him a meet, you know, meet and greet with any of our friendship city partners that are there and in a similar fashion to what Kristen is going to be doing, sort of carry official greetings from our mayor and or from us as a commission, he, he is uh, he has expressed um, that he would be happy to, to do that. So uh, I think I've connected him with you, Damon. You have each other's email addresses and maybe you, you'd just like to follow up with him or assign someone else to do that. Uh, right, sure. That'll be kind of exciting. It's a way to kind of do, a, you know, do something in person sort of related to the friendships, the ongoing friendship city courtship process. Definitely. So thank you. Thank you for finding out that information. Yes, Adrian. Um, I know from talking with Sylvia, one of our new commissioners, that she's really interested in Weiwei. And uh, I have directed her to the different meetings where we discussed the possibility of petitioning the city council for an interim sort of rep position or a friendship city someone. Um, and Dave in the past has offered to uh, help with the drafting of that petition. So I'm just letting you know that I know she has a, a, a real drive and interest in the way way connection. And, and I think she's supposed to attend today, but couldn't make it until later. Um, anyhow, I just wanted to speak up for that. Thank you. Yes. And she's on, she's on the way way committee now. <laughs> so hopefully she'll continue to work on that. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, so now we're going to go into our committee updates. And I know, I know Vivian needs to go soon, right? Vivian, would you, is there anything you'd like to say about uh, education? I think we like to put education uh, before budget because of that. Yeah, sorry. I was hoping to uh, try to get to it earlier, but um, yeah, I, I'm going to make this fast because um, I do have to leave soon. Um, so it, with regard to the YAS, um, youth artist competition, um, it looked like the, I talked to, um, the teachers at CHS and it, it seemed like they were uh, a lot more familiar with the process. Um, and we kind of established a connection with, um, Dr. Eichhorst after, I eventually got through to through um, the network of teachers to, and it seems like they got the process down. And we there were five entries that were received um, in just the two D two D art um, format. And um, yeah, the judging will is not going to happen until I think this summer. Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we'll we'll see about that. So. Great, thank you for moving that forward. Elizabeth, do you have anything you wanna add? No, that's, that's great, Vivian. Um, the, the, the judging will happen over the summer and every year the winners of the competition are announced at the Sister Cities International Annual Youth Conference, which draws nationally, draws kids from all over the country and that always takes place in August. Uh, and so that's when the winners will be announced. And if any of our Charlottesville um, artists uh, win one of the top prizes, there's, there they, they award, I think, two prizes, two cash prizes. If any of our Charlottesville artists win, they will be contacted directly, and so will we. And, in, and if we do have a winner, it'll be a wonderful opportunity, I think, to showcase that you know, on our, our website and, and our social media. Feeds and we'll make sure that we, you know, reach out to that to that student and see if we can do a, a profile. Thanks, Vivian, for reporting on that. Yeah, thank you, Vivian. Cool. It is really nice having her in our group. 
Okay, so now we'll go back uh, to budget and finance, and we have some pretty good budget and finance news. Michael, you want to talk about it? Oh, you're muted. Um, yes. So, um, as best I can read it, the budget was approved um, this last week. And we were fully funded for the $30,000 that we asked for. So. Yeah, that is really exciting news. And I just want to give you, and I believe Adrian, you worked on that too. Uh, big kudos for uh, really working on that and getting it through. Yeah. The, my only hesitancy was I was not at that meeting. I know that we're in the proposed budget, but I didn't see a link to the adopted budget. Um, but the vote was last week. So I checked with Max because I was also curious and she did confirm that it was awarded so, so we did get <laughs> that budget Fully that's the big news um and then we had um uh, looked like one more um uh payout um this last month um for uh, uh project related expenses um and working on um, updating the payment method in Wix to a city credit card um, because they do not do any other type of payment info. So that's the big news. Very good. Um, grants committee. Oh, Adrian, you are muted. I'll go to my grave not knowing if I'm muted or not. <laughs> um, we, we've been reminding outstanding uh, funded projects that they have till May 31st to submit their reimbursement requests. We still need to do some work to update the dashboard uh, of current and past grants just to make sure everything's current. That's a, a little bit of detail that um, I haven't gotten to yet. Um, the face-to-face -face, uh, international project, we've had a few back and forths about that as the grant committee knows. And um, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is that because of COVID, and I'm, I'm not sure the specifics, but the exhibition is currently running, it's up in the bridge um, gallery, the bridge site. The eight portraits were completed and there was an opening April 1st and we didn't get much advance notice about that. And um, the good news is that they're going to hold a closing reception April 29th. I let you all know about that, 5.30 p.m. I hope some or most of us can attend. Um, I also got news from Hannah, the operations manager there, that the gallery is open when she's there on site. And she mentioned that she would probably be there this week, Wednesday and Thursday. So if anyone wanted to randomly drop by, I'm going to try to. And, uh, and hope I'll intersect with her. You can see the artworks through the windows of the gallery. They position them in a particular way so that it is visible even if it's closed. Um, and the artworks will be documented in some fashion. She let me know just today that she will um, somehow record them and we can feature them. They will feature them on their website and we can feature them in social media because you know this this thing feels like it took a long time to to come to completion and I just didn't want it to be so ephemeral and all the portraits be shipped to their subjects in our different sister cities and and um, we had so little chance to see them so it looks like we're going to have some some record some way to know um, to access those those artworks before they the actual works go away um, I would like to, uh, moving away from that, are there any questions on that, on the face-to-face -face international grant? Okay. Um, Is it, uh, I do have a quick question. Oh, sure. um, um, oh, no, never mind, never mind. 
I was just thinking, Elizabeth, you might be wondering from the person who asked you, how can that person access it if they're in France? Well, that, that is the question. Like, how can, um, how can, well, first of all, he was one of the subjects, so he's very interested in knowing what's happening. But broad, more broadly than that, you know, how can anybody in one of the sister cities learn about this, see the portraits? Yeah. I don't know if there were provisions were made for that, but that surely seems like a missed opportunity if we don't cut, if, if, if we can't figure out how to, you know, how, how that might be possible. So. You know, I'll get back to her one more time. Okay. And off the top of my head, I'm thinking, why couldn't I go over there and do a very, you know, down and dirty video showing eight, we're talking about eight portraits. So it's not yeah. like a, you know, a Louvre museum type situation. Uh, and maybe get a, a, a minute or a minute and a half long video where you see each one of them. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing could be posted at least. Um, right. And then we could send it to our contacts in sister cities. Right. Oh. Right. Okay. I will. I'll, I, I totally miss the idea of our sister city constituents <laughs> um, enjoying the outcome of that project. Um, moving on to a more current grant, the only one we awarded this year to Henry Pollard, and um, I would, I'm, I had a calendar, we have a, a somewhat of a calendar set up showing what happens throughout the year, and <clears throat> I would like to invite or ask Stella as the liaison person for Henry to be in touch with him and maybe have a very small update on that for our next meeting. Um, then the uh, travel scholarships, which are currently part of the grant subcommittee. Um, thanks, Dave, for letting us know May 4th. And I, and I was gonna ask if there's a graphic we could use to promote the fact that we, we funded um, some people with travel scholarships and the trip is underway and all that stuff. So we took care of that. Um, I wanted to propose that Vivian join the grants uh, committee because we, I don't know who will be losing, but Amanda and Dave are amidst the, in the cohort of people that might be moving on. And um, now grants has travel scholarships and the third uh, entity, the, the uh, sponsorships. So we, we need some more um, bodies and brains on that. Uh, that's it. That's it for grants. Any questions? No, but thank you for your work on, on uh, tracking down more information about the, the portraits and everything. Yeah, it's been a little tricky. And I, you know, um, I wonder, we don't have to figure this out now, but, you know, we lost the main grant applicant, or, you know, he took on a, another position. And I, I wonder if some, maybe we have a little clause or paragraph or something that says that the, the, the grant winners, they, they have to owe us something, which is staying in touch. It's been, uh, it's been a little hard to chase some people down around this. Agreed. <clears throat> okay, our final um, committee outreach. We have an outreach report. Um, before we get on to the next door, yes, I, I would like, in, in, in so far as I'm on outreach too with Michael and Stella um, and Kimber, I think. Um, Lachine, let me know, and I'm sharing it with everyone if you don't know, that she'll be moving on to a new position with UVA Student Health Services. And we, her last day is this Friday, I understand. So we can... Um, give her a good send off here and a thank you for all her work with communications. And I uh, just wanted to call that out. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for your thank help. You. Thank you, Lachine. And I think that's all I have to say. I know, uh, I, I know again, on behalf of Sylvia and Kimber too, I think they have a lot of interest in a more lively website. And, um, you know, that would probably be something they talk to, to Michael well, and Stella yeah. and me together about, and um, we, we can see what we can do there. 
I could just offer some information um, with regards to the next door account. I believe Stella um, originally reached out to me regarding the request for the account. Um, and we talked about it in the office um, and, and a couple of things came up that we want the board to make sure they consider um, in this whole process. One of which being that uh, you all are, are really utilizing the current platforms that you have uh, to disseminate information. I know you have the website, um, Facebook, Twitter. Adrian, of course, is always pushing, you know, um, promoting what the, the commission is doing. And I'm assuming that's happening because there's still some room to really use those platforms to its full capacity. Um, so I did want to mention that for um, your consideration. Um, and then the other thing um, is I know you guys have had, had previous conversations with our former um, communications director, Brian Wheeler, who offered to kind of help in this, this whole process as well. Um, I know news flashes came up, um, possibly posting some information or some announcements on the city's Facebook page, um, among other things. And so the city may also uh, be a resource in that way. I don't want to burden the communications department too much right now with them being um, so short staffed, but I can't imagine it would require but so much work to maybe include an announcement or a link in a news flash that directs them to your Facebook page or whatnot. Um, or maybe even just a little article, blog type article, if you will, about the works that's going on in Sister City. Um, and then I guess the, the last thing, and again, in terms of the next door count, is that with um, Sister Cities being umbrellaed under the city of Charlottesville, not being its own standalone entity, um, you might imagine that the city or at least the communications department needs to be kind of heavily involved in the use um, of that account. Um, and so what, what Keena and I had discussed is of course the board voting on it, um, the, the next door account, if you guys see fit, um, maybe developing some type of pro proposal that could then be presented to communications, um, specifically the communications director. Now, here's the trick in all of that is that we don't have a communications director right now. Um, David Dillahunt is serving as the interim. Um, and we think that it would be best if we moved forward with this idea of proposing this idea to that department once the director is actually in place. That way you can really collaborate with them about how it all will work or get some feedback from them about the best path forward to get your information out. Um, so just wanted to, to put that information out there for you all to consider. Yep. Max, I have a question. We, I think we made a, or asked something a couple months ago and, and Kina did tell us the same thing is, are we using our current platforms to full capacity? And so what does that look like? How, how do you, or how does anyone gauge if we are? Um, well, admittedly, I haven't visited your website in a while, um, but I, so I don't know how up to date it is in terms of activities of the commission or pictures, or different projects or just announcements of what you all are doing. Um, I know that you're, it's, it's an ongoing conversation, um, but I, I admittedly, I don't know if that's actually happening. It may be, may not be, I'm not sure. Um, and then I guess using Twitter and Facebook in the same manner, kind of just pushing, flowing all of your information, every announcement that you want to uh, make, any information that you want to get out to the public, pushing it through those um, kind of channels um, in order to, to raise awareness, so to speak. Does Nextdoor cost the city any money to have an account? Um, I don't know. It does not. Um, so when we have a um, government account for next door, so it falls underneath the city of Charlottesville. They're very particular about what type of organizations can have an account. 
Um, and one of the downsides of next door, it's, it's only a one way communication stream. So you, you can't see what neighbors are posting and that's by design. Um, so a lot of times with the city, we'll have people having entire conversations that we don't know nothing about, about a topic or whatever. And we can't see it because it's designed for neighbors to have private conversations without government bureaucracy kind of stepping into that. So unless they comment on a thread that we have posted, that's the only way we'll get feedback and interaction with the public. So that's kind of like a downside of using it, but it's really good to target different neighborhoods for different initiatives um, and kind of segment um, your target audience that way. So it has pros and cons as most social media platforms, um, but it's definitely another tool you can use. Yeah, and I, I think we I think we view it as a, one of the many tools. I, I can't imagine we would ever drop Facebook or or anything like that. No, no, I gave the idea to Max just because, I mean, again, I thought that like Facebook, Instagram, but a lot of people now are on Nextdoor, so I thought that we could use it also that, but not in place of. So, I mean, if we can do it another time, that's fine either way. It's just, I'm on Nextdoor and... It can be useful to find the local things. So I thought like something like the grants that are coming up, for example, you can put it there and people can, um, like the travel grant that we did, you know, you put it there and people, a lot of people can see it just to give news. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not urgent, of course. When, when do we anticipate a new director of communications? I'll tell you they're actively in the process of mm -hmm. hiring a director. Don't know when that will happen, but the process is, is active. And, and another, not concern, but just, I guess, just something else to consider is this is kind of uncharted territory. We don't really have another board or commission um, who has requested some of the things that, that you all have. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we have another board or commission that even has a budget like you all have. And so we're just trying to set things up properly. Nice to know we're on the cutting edge. <laughs> there you go. Are, are you telling us that we are, uh, we must wait for the new comms director and do it that way? Or is it, are you saying it's highly advised that we do that? Um, it is our preference that you wait um, and let the director make the call on this. Okay. I think we can do that. Hopefully it won't be too long. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, is there anything else from outreach? Uh, just for everyone's oh. information. Uh, yeah. I'll throw it up Sorry. real quick. Um, mm -hmm. If Casey missed it in the chat, um, I did put together a quick document on tagging our various social media accounts um, in the chat. Um, it's uh, something that is on our uh, Google Drive, so it's restricted to the, the members of the commission, um, but it has, you know, how to tag some of the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, with some examples for the upcoming one of the trip, because that was a convenient example. Can I just ask maybe a really stupid question? Is it uh, important that I cut and paste this and pull it out of the chat? Are these chats uh, you just click available. on it, it will open the page and then it'll say, and then your computer will probably save it for you. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. It's on okay. the Google Drive anyway. Okay, what's on the Google Drive? This uh, document. The, oh, yeah, gotcha. I, I, okay. the link I put there is a link to the document. In the I drive. see, I, I understand now. Thank you. So uh, I will be seeing our old friend Kate Kogi this Saturday. Yay. Great. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, hosting an event called Cub Scout Aviation Day. And as you all may or may not know, she works with the um, Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, uh, the education department. So I reached out to her and she's going to be at the Gordonsville Municipal Airport this Saturday. So excited, looking forward to seeing her. That'll be fun. Give her our greetings. I definitely will. Thank you. I'll do that. Uh, Damon, I'm going to have to sign off. Because yeah, I think we are off. I think we are done here. I don't think there's anything left on our agenda. So thanks to everybody. We have our next meeting, I believe, on May 
17th and uh, look forward to seeing everybody then. Thanks everybody. Have a good Thank trip, Dave. All. Bye. Yeah, have a great Thank trip. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care, Lachine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, congrats, Lachine. Have a good, yeah. I hope it's a great adventure. Thank you. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.